Today we're going to talk about metal studs and how to understand the product codes for metal studs. Metal studs are the core of our business and the framing systems that we sell here at US Frame Factory. And understanding the gauges and the thicknesses of the metal and the different sizes of the studs is integral for building any commercial or residential application out of metal studs. We're going to talk about metal stud nomenclature. So metal studs, also known as cold form steel studs or light gauge steel, are known for that because of their thin gauge metal property where they're not made out of heavier hot rolled steel. Usually the steel is less than 0.1 inches thick. So in metal stud framing there's two major components. There's your track which typically goes on the floor or on the ceiling or in headers and then there's your stud which is a c-shaped profile that goes inside the track. The stud goes inside of the track like so. track is a C-like shape that only has one major part at the bottom and two legs on each side. The way you write and read track nomenclature is a code that starts out with three digits or four, followed by a letter, followed by three digits, a dash, and two digits. The first three digits are the depth of the track. So if you're thinking about wood, it's like a two by four, that's the four inches. In this case, it's 362. So you move a decimal two places and put it right here, you get 3.62, which is equal to three and five eighths. And so this is a three and five eighths inch track. Then it's followed by a letter T, T is for track. Then 200, again, you move the decimal two places and you get two inches. So that means that this width right here is two inches. And then dash 43, dash 43 is the thickness of the steel in thousandths of an inch. So you would add another zero here and a decimal and you get 0 0.043 inches thick. That's the thickness of the metal. There are different thicknesses based off of the gauge. A 43 uh, mil thickness, mil is thousandths of an inch, is equivalent to 18 gauge. Stud reads very similar to track. You've got three digits in this case, but you could have four. And so you move that decimal two places, so you got 3.62, so that's three and five eighths. S stands for stud. Uh, and then you got 162, and you put a decimal here, and that's one and five eighths dash 43. And again, 43 means 43 thousandths of an inch, or 43 mils, and that is 18 gauge. Notably, a stud is different than a track because a stud has both this thickness and then that inch and five eighths is called the flange. And then you have the lip, which is an additional return on the sheet metal that is strong, that makes it stronger than the track. Studs come in many different sizes. You have anywhere from inch and five eighths all the way up to 14 inches or even 16 inch uh, joist members. Stud and joist are used interchangeably where joists are used in floors and stud are typically used in, in walls. So a uh, stud would be uh, vertical up and down and a joist would be horizontal. They come in multiple different gauges all the way up from 25 gauge to even 10 gauge, which is very thick. There are other products that our company manufactures and makes. We make a product called slotted track which is a track that has a slot in the side. This is also frequently called deflection track. And it reads almost the exact same way as regular track, except instead of a T, you'll use SLT, which is slotted track. So this one might be a six inch slotted track with a two and a half inch leg. And it is 33 mil thick, which is 0 0.033 inches, which is 20 gauge structural. And then you, you can, again, you can see those slots on the side. And those slots allow for deflection in a building. So a wall that is built with cold form steel may not be the primary structure, but the primary structure might be red iron or cold form steel, uh, sorry, or concrete. If the, the primary structure is red iron or concrete, then you can infill the walls with cold form steel. And you want the cold form steel to be able to 
go up and down a little bit if the wall vibrates or moves somehow. Or say you're in a parking deck and you can imagine that as a car drives over, maybe the deck moves a, a very small amount. But to prevent cracking in your drywall and, and other damage to your structure, you typically have some slotted deflection track. Track, but especially stud, may have a feature called a punch in it, a service hole or a punch. The location of these holes will be 12 inches from the starting point of the stud and then every 48 or 24 inches after that, depending on if it's a drywall stud or a structural stud. One cool feature that we can do here at US Frame Factory is the addition of dimples on our stud and track. This allows us to model a building in software and generate the locations of these dimples so that assemblers can have an easier time assembling. They simply insert their stud into the track, line up the holes of the dimples, and put a screw through to make the connection. This is great for applications such as hotels and multifamily where you have lots of consistent and similar wall types. And so we can program all of these parts to be pre-made and assembled by uh, non-skilled labor that may not know all of the framing assembly. This can also be used for house kits and for uh, really just any kind of environment where you want to have an easier assembly. The last thing I'll talk about is how to actually measure and determine what kind of stud you have. So the first thing I would recommend is starting out with the width of the stud. So you use a tape measure and you can measure the width of it. So this is an eight inch wide stud. And then you can measure the flange. This one has an inch and five eighths flange. And then you can use a number of different tools to determine the thickness. So there's something we call a thickness gauge and you just slide that thickness gauge till you can't fit it on the stud anymore. It looks like this is a 16 gauge stud based off of the thickness gauge. You could also use what we call a micrometer. And a micrometer is uh, a fancy tool that can measure basically very accurately the thickness of the metal that we're working with. So this stud is actually an 18, or sorry, a 16 gauge stud as I said before, so its minimum thickness is 0.054. A note on that, studs are measured to a minimum thickness, meaning whenever I say dash 54, it could actually be 60 mils thick, or 61 mils thick, or 56 mils thick. As long as it is thicker than that minimum, then we are good to go. The last tool that comes in handy is a caliper. We use the calipers to measure accurately the width of our flange and sometimes the width of our stud. And it's just another tool and it can give you a close approximation of the thickness of the, the metal that you're working with. So again, measuring with this, we're getting approximately 0.61, 0 0.061, 0 0.062, which means that it's, it's meeting that minimum for a 0 0.054 inch 16 gauge. Head over to usframefactory.com. You'll see lots of resources there for framing and learning how to do framing and understanding our products. You'll also see contact information for our sales team. Please reach out to them. They'd love to help you with your next project. We also sell a lot of our clips and accessories online as well, so you can check us out there. And if you need anything quickly, let us know. We'd be happy to help you out.